And today, I'm starting a new project, which is funny because I'm not even done with my old project, but I'm starting a new project where I want to insulate my garage. Look at that. I have about 20 of those rolls. Some of them are over there. Some of them are back there, but um, I, I gotta put up a, a few outlets before I insulate the walls because, well, I'll show you. This is my irrigation system and it was like that when I moved in and that runs up and plugs in to right there. So as you can see, it comes all the way down there. So what I'm going to do is install a plug-in somewhere around here, one of these sides, probably, probably that side. But I'm gonna install a plug-in and then insulate this wall, of course, just like everything else. I'm going to be tapping into this outlet right here to run those wires. So that means I'm gonna have to take some of this down. Plus I wanna change all this anyway. So this is already outdated for me. I wanna update it because I got a bunch of new tools and stuff that I wanna organize better. And I got the tool drawer, I got the uh, uh, cabinet over there that I wanna re use to replace those cabinets. I mean, I got a lot of stuff to do. So you really just kind of have to tackle it one, one wall at a time, I guess. So I shouldn't have a big issue with moisture. So I think that if I can put up the insulation and just kind of work my way around after I do the, the electrical outlets, then I should be okay to, you know, get to the drywall whenever I can. But probably gonna try to get everything done as fast as possible. I got four electrical boxes. So I got four of these plus four outlets and figured, I say, kind of see that. Probably gonna have to go on this side like that, right? And kind of see how that goes. So um, I'm gonna put that on that side, tap that, run that all the way through to that plug-in over there. But I was thinking that I'm also going to want a plug-in somewhere about right there. And the reason being is that I'm gonna have jet ski and everything sitting here, which it's not here right now, but that's because I took it, or my cousin took it to the lake, but pretty much I think that having an outlet right here to plug and charge and do a battery maintain throughout the winter is a good idea. Also, same goes for right here. Um, this outlet goes to outside. I don't, I don't really know, you know, how I can tap that shy of just slicing that, adding in a box and then, you know, it should be pretty easy, but still, that bo that box goes outside, and I want to add an outlet, probably right about y'all. So I'll have one outlet, two outlets, three outlets, and then the fourth one I may or may not use. Just kind of depends. Just looking at this, as far as what I need to drill, so I don't know, was about half inch, three quarters, three each stud. It's not bad. I just need to do that all through that wall. Now I installed that one about the same height as that. I think it's probably a little bit lower, but um, still that one's right there. And then the other one went ahead and put on this side because it fit perfectly and it was hard to swing the hammer the other direction. But I'm gonna have to run the wire through these studs here. And over on this side where the door is, it's going to have to go around that corner and then up over the door somehow. So yeah, I gotta figure that out. first outlet right there uh, as you can see I got to fix that thing tape it together probably epoxy uh, it so it doesn't fall apart but then I will be able to plug this right into that once this is hot 
um, which I have it wired. It goes down, down the fire blocks, underneath through all the, the studs, just like this. I drilled a three fourths hole for each one. Then I got uh, cut off right here, basically hits this outlet and splits. I probably should have did a little bit more extra room. I think you're supposed to have six inches or something like that of play to pull it out, but still, uh, it works, or at least it should work. I haven't tested it yet. And then I got bikes and stuff and everything off the wall just so I could get this going. But then it runs all the way down there. I drilled through the center, which was kind of an interesting little drill, through that fire brick right there, or fire thing right there, up and over the door. Then I had to come up just a little bit higher so I didn't drill a hole through that wire down a little bit of course putting staples in as i go through the boards and then that runs behind that which i still have to staple around that other outlet down there through those holes and then i still have some work to do behind all of this which this is all a mess don't look at it i gotta pull all this out and then actually hook that up to that outlet right there so that one outlet is extending to these other two outlets which is not that big of a deal because this is gonna be running an irrigation system, which is very low power. And this is going to basically be handling trickle chargers for a jet ski and a four wheeler. So it realistically, it's not a whole lot of power. And considering what I have running off of this with all these plugins, I mean, just a few more outlets isn't gonna be much of a big deal. And then again, as you can see, this is the uh, wire that comes in for the outside outlet. I have uh, two options here. One, I can go in there and pull that outlet on the outside and basically extend this cable out, run a new cable so I have plenty of extra cable to go around. Or I could pull out this staple right here, run it up here with enough give, and then run this over and then connect it to that. Basically tapping that line directly without having to do anything else so i think i'm gonna do that i don't even know what i'm gonna use this outlet for i just figured if i'm running outlets and tapping things and getting insulation installed i might as well install some extra outlets but i have all of these rolls of r13 again not the best you know highest end insulation you can get but it's way better than bare walls that i had and a single roll which is like 32 feet i think a single roll got three of these total so i got all those stapled up and kind of worked around the wires and everything so i think that's a good start these are going to be more complicated just because you got to kind of work around that stuff not that big of a deal but i'm not 100 percent sure on how all that's gonna work out so i'm just starting with the easy stuff first and then i'll do the fine tuning things later on but i have the whole rest of this wall to do and then the rest of that wall to do, which incorporates tearing down my all thing that I have going on right there and get new pegboard, etc., etc., and uh, then all those walls. So I got a lot to do, but I think so far it's coming out pretty good. I mean, having zero insulation and nothing between this besides, you know, some OSB and siding versus R13 and then a layer of drywall. It's gonna make a huge difference. And then after all of that, once that's done and I actually finish all of the insulation, the next step is going to be insulating the garage door, which shouldn't be too too hard. It's just like you clean the surface, you add a layer of insulation, it just kind of fits in there. It's actually pretty simple to do, but it's just something that, you know, this door does not do anything. It's very, very thin metal. So that is gonna be a huge part and insulating the garage overall just to make this a little bit better in both the heat of the winter and the summer wait the heat of the summer and the cold of the winter and i'm for bed well it is day two of my little adventure here and i had to get some more hardware because i had an idea something i want to do let me show you since i have to tap this right what i want to do is add a light switch possibly on the other side and add an outlet up there so I have this idea for what I want to do with this space. I have it in my head, but I don't know how it's going to work out. But one thing I do know is that I'm probably going to have some lights that are going to be lighting up the space. And it would be nice to have a light switch right there that controls that little box. So 
I'm gonna add that. And today's goal is essentially to make it to getting this tapped to make the, the wire that I just ran over there live. Now I have been looking up some different code specifications because um, I was kind of curious being in the garage, you have the potential of being in contact with water, you might need a GFCI, uh, which is true. Uh, that's actually part of the code, you need a GFCI uh, unless it's a dedicated area for a very specific thing that doesn't have the option of getting hit with water. Uh, unfortunately, this does have the option with getting hit with water being that it's gonna be near the garage door. Um, so I have two options, either one, I can hook up a GFCI downstairs in the uh, basement um, switch box, you know, pretty much just a circuit breaker. Or two, since I'm tapping everything on this one, I can change this to a GFC GFCI and that will protect everything else that it's being hooked up to. So I'm gonna go with option number two. I'm not gonna go with option number two right away, uh, but it will be something I'm going to do before this is all complete. Either way, unfortunately, uh, my pegboard here is already outdated. So yeah. I'm going to be removing this today and getting access to the stuff behind it. Fun. It really sucks because I like this shelf. As you can see here though, I have my little light with the lights underneath it. It's controlled by this little button. So I've used this a little bit, but in the future I want it to be ran off strictly just a light switch. Hey, another useful application. Look at that. 128 watts for this fan on max, right? Second floor fan. It is freaking hot, so I need this fan. And I'm charging with the solar panel at 77, eight watts, which is the most I've ever gotten from it. But it is like middle of the day. But still, that's pretty cool. Hopefully that'll mean this will last a lot longer than just running strictly off battery. Basically, I'm turning off this. That way I could wire it up. Didn't exactly plan on doing this so quickly as far as taking down my shelf and all the lighting and stuff that I had but in order to wire this correctly which means running a wire up and stapling it to the wall all the way up to the outlet I have to take all this apart so that's that's what I'm doing okay so it comes down here through the wall up the wall through the hole down into there and then back to the hole over to there so this is going to connect and make everything live and then this is going to connect to it oh, that will actually run from here up to i haven't put that in yet but so far that's what i got there we go i haven't turned it on yet but got that wired up there and boom got that installed so this should turn on those lights which is what i'll have plugged into there and all that runs up and over to those plugins. Here we go, first test. I plugged it in, turn on the switch or the uh, circuit breaker. Now let's see if it works. Ooh, lights, it works. All right, next test. This should not work and it does not until I switch that on. Ooh. There we go. Second switch or outlet. There we go, it's working. Final outlet, boom, so good. Okay, so fast forward a little bit, and uh, as you can see, made a little bit of progress. I still have this whole wall to do, so definitely not close to being done. But I put all the big pieces up, I gotta mess around a little bit on that right there and kind of bring that wiring out, so. That's gonna take a little bit more effort, but yeah, this is the day two wrap up because it's 8.30 at night and I'm done.